Welcome to AP Bio Videos. This is your DJ, Mr. Hall. In this video, we're going to be talking about lipids. There's four major types of lipids that we deal with in biological systems. Um, one of them is fats. So we got our good old friend, Mr. Fatty, from Austin Powers. And another type is oils. So you probably have cooked with a lot of oils before. Um, we have waxes, so here we've got just some wax that we put in like candles, also earwax and some other things. And then we also talk about steroids, so i got my good buddy Arnold here. I'm not saying the man was on roids, but I'm just saying, uh, usually we think of steroids, we think of building muscle, but steroids are chemical messengers that we use in our body all the time. So these are the four major types of lipids that we're going to deal with. Let's look first at the major functions of lipids. Um, the most common function that we talk about is energy storage. So lipids are going to um, be ways that biological systems and organisms can store energy. Uh, we tend to think of fat as a way of storing energy. So when you eat too much, you put on a few extra pounds, uh, you really, body is designed to use fat to store up energy for a later purpose. So animals that hibernate, you're typically going to associate with energy storage as they get really fat before the winter. We also tend to think of lipids as um, protection. So for example, fats we put on places on our body that are going to help uh, protect us from physical damage. So really these first two, um, energy storage and protection, are pretty much typical functions for fats as we store energy with fats and we put them in places in our body to protect us. We also use lipids as waterproof coverings. Um, and so we use them to cover uh, our cells. You know, we use lipids to cover our, uh, in the cell membrane to be on the outside of a cell. And typically those are going to be things like waxes and oils. And the reason lipids can do that is because they are hydro phobic, which means they are nonpolar and they don't mix with water. And then we also think of lipids as being chemical messengers. And so they are going to be used to send messages uh, through our blood and throughout our body. And those are usually associated as steroids. So when we think of things like testosterone and estrogen and other type of signaling molecules, a lot of those are steroids, and they're used just to send messages um, throughout the body. I do want to point out at this time that lipids um, are not monomer, or excuse me, they are not polymers. So when we think about most of our macromolecules, we think about them being like cars on a train. We have one small molecule linked to another, linked to another, uh, like amino acids in a protein, or nucleotides and DNA, but lipids don't actually do that. So they are not polymers. And um, the, the closest that, that, that lipids might get to being a polymer is something like a triglyceride, which we have right here. And we have this glycerol backbone, and then we have these three fatty acid tails. And those are going to come together and make a triglyceride. Another characteristic of lipids is that they are not water soluble. So they will not dissolve in water. And um, some terms that describe things that are not water soluble uh, one is hydrophobic. So, like phobic makes you think of a phobia, so something. Uh, is repelled by something, and then hydro means water, so they're hydrophobic. They don't mix with water. And also, the, the reason that they're hydrophobic is because they are nonpolar. If you'll recall, water is a polar molecule. It's got positive and negative ends, and so things like ions and other polar molecules dissolve very well in water. Um, but lipids are nonpolar, and they don't uh, dissolve very well in water. So here are some examples. If you've ever seen a photograph of an oil spill, uh, you've probably seen this nice sheen across the water that you see here. And that is just where the oil doesn't actually mix with the water once the oil's been spilled um, into the ocean or a pond or lake or estuary or something. Um, another thing that you've probably seen is 
when oil gets mixed with water, uh, they don't mix. And so you can actually see here the drops of oil and then the oil collecting at the top. This oil has just been pulled, poured into the water from the top. And so they're not going to mix because uh, oil is a lipid and lipids are nonpolar, hydrophobic. They are not water soluble. And the reason for that, if we look at this triglyceride here, we can see is because lipids have uh, are mostly composed of just these hydrocarbon chains, so just carbons and hydrogens, and virtually all of the bonds here are nonpolar covalent. So the vast majority of, of the molecule is nonpolar, and so it's not going to dissolve in water. So let's look real quick at some types of lipids. Um, we're going to look at this part. It's going to be about fats. And so <clears throat> some common fats you see. This here on the bottom is what we call a triglyceride. And that's just simply because it has three fatty acid tails. So that's where the tri comes from. And it has this glycerol backbone. And we often say it's kind of in the shape of a letter E. But fats are really just what we call fatty acids. They are, <clears throat> if we look up here at the top, we have two fatty acids. They're just chains of carbons and hydrogens. And then they have a carboxyl group on the end. So that's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, a single bond to an OH. Now fats can be what we call saturated or unsaturated. And so if we look here, um, <clears throat> what we can see is that a saturated fat has got the maximum number of hydrogens that it can possibly have in its chain. And so we have all single bonds and therefore saturated fat is nice and straight. Unsaturated fats on the other hand do not have the maximum number of hydrogens. Uh, we could have another hydrogen here and another hydrogen here, but the reason we don't is because we have a double bond. So this is a monounsaturated fat, and that is because it has one double bond. And that's going to cause the fat to bend, and it's that bent shape that actually makes unsaturated fats better for us because they're not going to build up in our blood vessels and cause cardiovascular disease. In this image, you can see a blood vessel that's actually been clogged. So all this yellow stuff here is what we call plaque. Um, and that's just built up fats and cholesterol and debris inside the blood. And saturated fats are more likely to cause that than unsaturated. Next lipid we're going to talk about is steroids. And steroids are always going to have this four ring structure. So here we have one, two, three, four rings. And steroids are going to serve as chemical messengers. So, for example, here we have testosterone and we have estrogen. And you'll notice there's really not a whole lot of difference between the two. Um, there's just a difference in some of the functional groups and where they're arranged at. But it's those steroids, those messengers, that are what tell your body whether you are supposed to phenotypically become a boy or whether you're supposed to come a girl. The last type of lipid we're going to look at is what we call a phospholipid. And these lipids get their name because they have a phosphate group um, on one end, and then they have two fatty acid tails connected to that phosphate group. And what's interesting about them is that they are, in essence, a polar molecule. They have a hydrophobic tail, so the fatty acid tails are like all fats, they're hydrophobic. And then the head of the molecule, though, is actually hydrophilic. We usually think about these types of lipids when we're thinking about cell membranes. So here is an image of a typical cell membrane. And what you'll notice about it is that it has what we call the phospholipid bilayer. In other words, here is one layer of phospholipids. And then here is another layer of phospholipids. And each one of these circles here represents a phosphate group, which is hydrophilic. So we have lots of water outside and inside the cell. And so those hydrophilic heads, those phosphate groups, 
on those phosphate heads, they really like the water, and so they're on the outside of the membrane. And then we have um, these fatty acid tails on the inside, which are hydrophobic. So we have a nonpolar hydrophobic region, region on the inside of the membrane, and then the outside of the membrane is hydrophilic and polar. And that is going to, um, in large part, affect the materials that can go into and out of cells.